Well, good afternoon. You're watching the Midday News on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Aishwarya Kapoor and these are the headlines. Prime Minister Modi on a two-day visit to his parliamentary constituency, Varanasi, to spend his birthday today with the school children to inaugurate or lay foundation stone for development projects worth over 500 crore rupees on Tuesday. India on the cusp of unprecedented transformations, as Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu, in address to Indian diaspora in Malta, says systemic government reforms are making an inclusive society. Delegation level talks with President of Malta stated in the afternoon. Supreme Court orders to provide safety and security to Shabnam, one of the petitioners in the Nikah, Halala and Polygamy case. Shabnam sought protection from court after facing an acid attack in Bulan Sheher in Uttar Pradesh. Move uh, to check infiltration at the border. Home Minister Rajnath Singh launches India's first smart fence pilot project at India-Pakistan border. Two stretches of 5 kilometers each at border get laser-activated fences and technology-enabled barriers. An RSS to present its views on various contemporary issues of national importance, three-day lecture series on future of Bharat, an RSS perspective to be held from today. Eminent citizens, businessmen, politicians and journalists to participate. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be on a two-day visit to his parliamentary constituency Varanasi from today. On his birthday today, the Prime Minister will visit Narur village where he will interact with the children of a primary school aided by non-profit organization a Room to Read. Later, he will interact with the students of Akashi Vidya Peet and children assisted by them on the premises of a diesel locomotive works. The Prime Minister will also launch a film on his childhood with differently abled and on Tuesday, the Prime Minister will inaugurate or lay the foundation of various development projects worth over 500 crore rupees. Among the projects to be inaugurated are Integrated Power Development Scheme for Purani Kashi and an Atal Incubation Centre at BHU. The Prime Minister will later address a gathering. And on the Prime Minister's 68th birthday today, President Ramnath Kovind greeted the Prime Minister on Twitter and wished him a long life and many years dedicated to the service of the people. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu, who is in Malta, called the Prime Minister and wished him. He said that India is making a rapid strides under the Prime Minister's visionary leadership. He was wished the Prime Minister a long and healthy life. Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan, BJP President Amit Shah, Union Ministers Arun Jaitley and Rajnath Singh and Congress President Rahul Gandhi also greeted the Prime Minister on his birthday. On to the other top story, India's first smart fence pilot project was launched by Home Minister Rajnath Singh today. The project that deploys laser-activated fences and technology-enabled barriers to plug vulnerable gaps along frontiers was launched in two 5 kilometers each patches along the Indo-Pak border. The new system provides for round-the-clock surveillance on the border and in different weather conditions, be it a dust storm, fog or rain. The laser fence and other gadgets have been integrated and a CCTV-like feed will be given to a BSF post so that immediate action can be taken against any intrusion or infiltration attempt. The initiative is part of the comprehensive integrated border management system proposed to be deployed at these two borders by the centre as part of its decision to completely seal the two borders to stop infiltration and illegal migration. In future, it will be deployed along 2,400 kilometers of India's border with Pakistan and Bangladesh. Fencing. यह भी पूरी हुई है 
मॉडर्न इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को भी हम अपग्रेड करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं और मुझे बताते हुए बेहद खुशी है कि बेहद चार वर्षों के अंदर हम लोगों ने सिक्स लैख बॉर्डर रोड का निर्माण करने में कामयाबी हासिल की है और and uh, there will be uh, nine phased elections uh, to the panchayats in jammu and kashmir the elections will be held at beginning 17th of november the next phases are 20th of november 24th of november 27th and 29th of november and 1st of december 4th 8th and 11th of december the polling hours will be 8 in the morning to 2 pm and the entire poll process will be completed by 17th of december the elections will be held on a uh, non party basis and the counting of votes will take place on the same day or the very next day of voting election expenditure has been increased in these elections uh, to 20000 rupees for sarpanches and 5000 rupees for panches the polls would be held through ballot and uh, migrant kashmiri pandits can also vote uh, through postal ballots the last elections to the panchayats in the state took place in 2011 the election would be held in nine phases I repeat the elections would be held in nine phases the date of issuance of the first phase notification in the gazette is 23rd of october 23rd of october if you notice the counting for the municipal elections has been scheduled for 20th of october and this process is going to commence for the panchayat elections on 23rd of october that is tuesday there are about 4500 panchayat halkas in the state uh, in 316 blocks about 4500 panchayat halkas there are about 35000 panch constituencies 35000 panch constituencies and the number of electors as per the draft roll is 58 lakhs this election is going to be through ballot papers and ballot boxes would be required Uh, we are getting additional ballot boxes from the neighboring states and uh, these ballot boxes would be prepared for uh, uh, the purpose of uh, the poll there will be two kind of ballot papers because the uh, you are aware that amendments have been carried out recently where the sarpanch has also been made directly elected that means the uh, voters directly vote for the sarpanch and therefore there will be two ballot papers which every voter would be marking one would be of the panch of the particular ward the panch constituency and another one would be the sarpanch for the panchayat halka voters will now have a mobile application uh, to check uh, poll code violations by political parties and candidates The day elections are announced in uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan and Mizoram. Voters in these states uh, will get to use this mobile application. The Sea Vigil mobile application gives uh, the common man the opportunity to click pictures and take videos of violations and send it to the concerned election officers. Further the application can use the exact location of for the complainant to using longitude and latitude information and feedback about the action taken will be given to the complainant within 100 minutes the chief election commissioner op rawat said that as a pilot project the application was used in bengaluru city during the karnataka assembly polls he said that now this will be a bigger pilot project ahead of the lok sabha elections The application also has an inbuilt option which will help the people tick a box to keep their name and their cell phone numbers as secret. And ISRO on Sunday launched two observation satellites of the UK into the orbit from its spaceport at Sri Hari Kota. The satellites were NOVASAR that uh, intends to be used for uh, forest mapping, land use and ice cover monitoring, flood and disaster monitoring and S14 to be used for surveying resources, environment monitoring, urban management and disaster monitoring. Terming the mission as an excellent success, ISRO chairman K Sivam said that the launch vehicle PSLV C42 injected the satellites into orbits 17 minutes and 45 seconds after liftoff and placed them in a subsynchronous orbit. 
583 kilometers from Earth. Both the satellites were launched as per commercial arrangement between the UK-based company and ISRO's commercial wing Antrix Corporation Limited. And within the next six months, 10 satellite missions and eight launch vehicle missions would be launched, one every two weeks. ISRO's moon mission would also be launched on 3rd of January next year. And Prime Minister Modi congratulated the team on the successful launch, saying that it showcases India's prowess in competitive space business. PSLV C-42 mission and launched two customer satellites into precisely into the defined orbit. That is, with respect to the 583 kilometer, whatever we defined, we could achieve within a one kilometer in one side, three kilometers the other side. It is a, in our space parlance, it is, a, it is much, much, much more than excellent. It is like that. That way I would say this is an excellent uh, the mission and it is a very, very historic uh, the, the mission. What the mission today it has achieved as per the uh, navigation system, the name's POD, preliminary orbit determination, the achieved orbit is 581.6. As chairman has already put it, it's only 1.4 kilometers in the perigee, that is the nearest point to the earth. And also on the apogee, other side, it is 588.9, which is again within 3 kilometers. Whereas the specification allows up to a dispersion of plus minus 20 kilometers. So this shows the very precise, accurate injection capability of the PSLV. And this is the 44th flight of the PSLV. And then we have the PSLV in its generic configuration. Excel, that is the mighty version of the PSLV and the Corolone version. And this configuration today, what we have flown, is the Corolone configuration. And that was the 12th of such Corolone flight we are flying today. And uh, with this success, it has already registered 42 successful flights. And thus the uh, reliability also has gone above 0.97. So it was a wonderful mission. And on to Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu's uh, Europe tour. He is in Malta on the second leg of his tour and on Sunday he interacted with the Indian diaspora in Malta. Addressing the Indian community, he hailed their contribution in strengthening India's relations with the southern European island country. Speaking at the function, he said that wherever Indian community has gone in the world, they have prospered, integrated well with the societies and also brought name and fame to their motherland, India. Earlier, the Vice President was warmly welcomed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade Promotion of Malta, Carmelo Abella, upon his arrival in Malta from Serbia. Vice President Naidu is on a three-nation tour to Serbia, Malta and Romania to boost ties with these European countries. The vast and growing Indian diaspora is doing well everywhere because I always feel that it's my conviction, the Indian lion the soil, the water, the air has something special in it. Every section of the Indian population, irrespective of their profession, they have some talent or other hidden. And if a proper opportunity is given, they will excel. That is proving to be real now. In the entire world, wherever Indian community has gone, they have prospered, they have integrated with their respect to societies. They also brought name and fame to their motherland, India, and also they are becoming economically strong, and they are also doing something back home to their respective country. And on the last uh, day of his visit to Serbia on a Sunday, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu also visited the historic place known as uh, the Monument to the Unknown Hero in the Serbian capital, Belgrade. The Vice President, along with the parliamentary delegation, went around the memorial where he offered a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier at uh, Mount uh, Avala and paid his respects. The memorial, located atop Mount Avala, was built uh, to commemorate the sacrifice, valor and courage of all the victims of First World War. It was built in 1934 to 38 uh, as a place where an unknown Serbian soldier was buried. Vice President Naidu also offered a floral tribute to Mahatma Gandhi's bust in Belgrade. Later, the Vice President and the delegation attended the working lunch hosted by the Serbian Prime Minister before going to Malta. 
And Vice President M. Vankaya Naidu was extended the rare honor of addressing the special session of the Parliament of the Republic of Serbia in Belgrade on Saturday. It was uh, in uh, the same uh, hall of the National Assembly of Serbia that uh, former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru addressed the world leaders while launching the non-alignment movement along with the veteran leader of Yugoslavia, Marshal Tito. In his uh, hour-long address to the lawmakers of the host country, Vice President Naidu fondly recalled uh, the close affinity and shared vision with which leaders of both the countries played a key role in launching the non-alignment movement. He said that relations between the two countries are deeply rooted in history. Referring to the International Day of Democracy, Vice President Naidu gave a detailed account of the steady growth and consolidation of parliamentary democracy in India and highlighting the importance of democracy for participatory development. He quoted Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru from his speech at the same venue in 1961. The Vice President received a huge standing ovation on the, occasion, on the conclusion of his address to the lawmakers of Serbia. It was here the first NAM summit took place in 1961. Prime Minister of India, he then, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, other world leaders of non-aligned movement addressed the NAM summit in this hallowed hall along with uh, the then leader of Yugoslavia, Sri Marshal Tito. Sentinels of people's welfare, relationship between India and Serbia are deeply rooted in history. From the early days of independent India, both the countries laid great emphasis on non-aligned movement and contributed much to creation of a new democratic world order, particularly for the post-colonial third world that challenged the concept of the bipolar world. Numerous high-level exchange of visits between both the countries during the period is a testimony to the shared belief between both of our countries. In midday news, we'll take a very short break here. We'll be right back with more news. Art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas. <laughs> Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate, inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. To the other top story, the Supreme Court has ordered to provide safety and security to Shabnam, a petitioner in the Nikah, Halala and Polygamy case. Shabnam had approached the Supreme Court seeking help after facing an acid attack in Bulan Sheher in Uttar Pradesh. The SSP Bulan Sheher would be liable for her safety and security now. And the Supreme Court today stayed the Operation of uh, the National Green uh, Tribunal's 2017 order directing that odd even vehicle rotation scheme be implemented for two wheelers as well in Delhi. The decision came after the Delhi government expressed its inability to accommodate 68 lakh people in public transport if the odd even scheme is made applicable for two wheelers as well. 
Under the scheme, more odd and even numbered vehicles ply on alternate days. NGT had in December last year dismissed the Delhi government's review plea seeking exemption for two-wheelers in the odd-even scheme. It had said that such a relaxation would defeat the purpose of improving Delhi's air quality. The BJP on Sunday organized a Kavyanjali program in the memory of a later former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee in Delhi. At the program, various eminent poets and speakers through their poems paid a tribute to Vajpayee on the occasion. Paying his tribute to the former Prime Minister, Home Minister Rajnath Singh said that Vajpayee's personality was acceptable and popular among the masses. He also mentioned about the diplomatic skills of the late Prime Minister Vajpayee. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj also attended the program. She talked about Vajpayee's positive attitude. She said that his speeches were historic and general masses were always eager to listen to them. Founding leader of the BJP, Vajpayee passed away on 16th of August this year at the age of 93. <laughs> तो उस समय चीन ने यह घोषणा की और कहा अब चीन सिक्किम पर कभी दावा पेश नहीं करेगा सिक्किम का भारत में विलय हो चुका है और सिक्किम चीन का नहीं है बल्कि भारत का है पहली बार उसने अपना दावा छोड़ दिया यह कूटनीतिक कुशलता होती है इसे डिप्लोमेटिक स्किल कहते हैं अंग्रेजी में यह आदरणीय अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी सोलह अगस्त की शाम को जब अटल जी के निधन का समाचार आया तो अलग अलग लोगों के मन में अलग अलग प्रतिक्रियाएं हुई किसी ने कहा एक वरिष्ठ राजनेता चला गया किसी ने कहा एक सफल राजनयिक चला गया किसी ने कहा अद्वितीय वक्ता चला गया लेकिन संपूर्ण हिंदी विश्व में संपूर्ण हिंदी जगत ने कहा हिंदी का पुरोधा चला गया और पूरे विश्व के सभी कवियों ने कहा हमारी बिरादरी का एक साथी चला गया and the Rashtra Swayam Sevak Sangh uh, or uh, the RSS will organize a three-day lecture series on future of Bharat, the RSS perspective at a Vigyan Bhavan today. It will be inaugurated by RSS Chief Mohan Bhagwat in the evening. He will interact and present the RSS views on various contemporary issues of national importance. The three-day event will see participation from eminent citizens, businessmen, politicians, dharm gurus, journalists, and missionaries from uh, various nations and also people from all walks of life. Our top international focus now, the world's uh, strongest storm this year, Typhoon Mankut, uh, continued its path of destruction across Southeast Asia over the weekend. South China is now bearing the brunt of the typhoon, which is uh, deluging areas uh, with heavy rains and wind speeds of up to 162 kilometers per hour. Two people have been killed in south of China. Millions of lives have been put on standstill as the flights are cancelled, trains are stopped and major roads closed. Residents in the province of uh, Guangdong have been uh, locked down on uh, the highest alert. More than 2.45 million people have been evacuated from here. And Mankut reached uh, mainland China on Sunday afternoon after accumulating uh, Hong Kong and killing dozens of people in the Philippines. The storm uh, caused a deadly trail across the region, killing at least uh, 64 people in the Philippines. Many of the Philippines' uh, deaths were caused by landslides, with dozens more still believed to be buried under the deluge. I, I, I share the grief of those who have lost their loved ones. Uh, those are what would call un unforeseen events. Uh, in insurance, it is in the term an act of God. I don't know how it, it can be an act of God, but that is the uh, term used in insurance. And as the Mankhut uh, marched towards the Chinese mainland, Hong Kong was also faced by fierce winds uh, that tore off the roofs and downed trees. Hong Kong's weather observatory issued its highest storm warning alert and the city was all but shut down as transport was suspended and torrential rains flooded roads and buildings. 
winds of 473 km per hour and gusts of up to 223 km per hour were reported. There were no reported deaths in Hong Kong, a city well prepared for tropical cyclones. Mankut is expected to gradually weaken into a tropical depression by Tuesday as it continues to move inland. Meanwhile, the death toll from Hurricane Florence in the United States has now risen to at least 16 after it landed in North Carolina on Friday and brought a record rainfall. The storm drenched North Carolina with yet more downpours on Sunday, cutting off the city of Wilmington, damaging tens of thousands of homes and threatening worse flooding as rivers fill to the busting point. North Carolina's governor has said that more than 900 people were rescued from floodwaters and 15,000 others remained in shelters in North Carolina. He urged anyone in the flood-prone areas to evacuate. About 7,56,000 homes and businesses were without power in North and South Carolina. The White House said that President Donald Trump approved making federal funding available in some affected counties. Donald Trump also offered condolences to the families and friends of those who died. And on to sports news now, Indian boxers Simranjit Kaur, Monica and Bhagyabhati Katri won gold medals at the Ahmed Komert tournament in Istanbul in Turkey. Simranjit Kaur defeated Turkey's uh, Sema Kaliskan in uh, the 64 kilogram category to clinch the gold medal. Monica defeated I.C. Kagire in uh, the 48 kg category, while uh, Bhagyabhati got the better of uh, Selma in uh, the 81 kilogram category to fetch the top honors. Meanwhile, in the 57 kilogram category, Sonia Lathir had to settle for the bronze medal. And world champion Kevin Mayer of France set a new world record in the decathlon at the Decastar event in France. Mayer set the world record with 9,126 points, surpassing American Ashton Eaton's 9,045 points recorded at the 2015 World Championship in Beijing. Mayer's threw a personal best of 71.90 meters in the javelin in the penultimate event. He finished uh, the decisive 1500 meters in just outside of 4 minutes 36 seconds, having needed to finish in 4 minutes 49 seconds to beat uh, the previous record. And with the record, he also became the third decathlete to surpass the, the 9000 point barrier. An ace Indian wrestler Sakshi Malik got uh, the silver medal at uh, the International Wrestling Tournament in Belarus. Sakshi lost to her Hungarian rival Marina Sastin 2 6 to settle for the silver in the 52 kg category. Meanwhile, in the 57 kg weight category, Pooja Dhanda backed the bronze medal after defeating her counterpart from the United States. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.